All right, it's time to start doing a little bit of testing. I'm going to go ahead and SSH again uh, from my local machine over to Schooner. Um, one hint about shells is that you can use up arrow, down arrow to uh, select uh, commands that you have typed in the past. And that turns out to be incredibly uh, useful. And now we wait for Schooner to return. Okay, uh, so we are in uh, deep learning practice, skeletons, module two, and there's where we're working. And uh, the last thing that you need to do to set up uh, Python properly is that you need to do a conda activate TF. And this is going to uh, connect you to the environment that I have running on uh, Schooner. My, object, my, my plan is to keep that relatively uh, up to date uh, with the modern versions of TensorFlow and, and Keras and, uh, and Python and, and other tools. Uh, if you need something added, just let me know. All right, so that responds by uh, indicating the, uh, the environment right there, TF. TF stands for TensorFlow. And, and then this is the directory that we're sitting in. All right, so now is the moment of truth. And we're going to uh, execute Python, uh, uh, the Python program itself, xor base.py, that is the code. And let's specify the no-go switch for, uh, uh, for the instant. Now we get to see how many syntactic errors we have. Typically, you will see a variety of bits of feedback. Uh, and actually, it, it all uh, worked as expected. Um, so here, part of what's, what uh, TensorFlow is complaining about is that uh, I am asking for a GPU, and it doesn't actually see any uh, GPU uh, hardware. Um, so, that's, so that's what's happening there. It's not catastrophic. It's just a, a warning. Um, yeah, those are all warnings. Um, but uh, everything uh, executed as we expected. So uh, no GPU is getting printed out because, and that's in the main uh, section of the code. Uh, that's getting printed out because it doesn't detect a GPU. Um, this is from that model. This is the model summary uh, that talks about the each of the layers within the model, the hidden layer, the output layer. There are two hidden units and one uh, output unit and the total number of parameters is six and three. We talked about that in as we were doing things in uh, CoLab. Total trainable parameters is nine. Um, here's that EXP string that uh, we created and you can see uh, it's using the default EXP uh, index number of zero and we have two hidden nodes here. Um, however, because we specified no go right here, we actually did not uh, execute uh, any of the training. So that's the next step here. Now, just a, a little bit of a warning. Right now, we are executing this code on the login node uh, of the supercomputer. And login nodes are intended only for setting up experiments, uh, writing code like we've, what we've been doing, uh, and, uh, and then uh, doing testing so that when we actually push our programs out to the compute nodes of the supercomputer, we have a reasonable chance of having those execute properly. Um, so what I'm about to show you here, um, we're actually going to execute a an experiment, but we're going to execute a very short one so that we don't uh, make uh, too heavy use of the CPU that's here. So I'm going to specify epochs. So notice that I took away the no-go. I'm going to specify epochs to, let's say, 10. And, uh, and we should get out of this a, a full uh, execution. And notice that it said training and then done training. And now within our directory, uh, let's look at results. Um, you can see that there is an XOR results, uh, exp0 hidden two. So that's our exp string that we created right there. And it is a pickle file. In fact, we can look at the details there. Um, that happens to have uh, 312 bytes in it. So there's not a whole lot uh, going on there. Um, 
this uh, this pickle file is coming from the last piece of our training process, which was uh, right in here. So there's our opening of that file and then placing the two objects within that file. And at a later time, we can actually open these uh, up uh, again and, and do things with them, such as plotting. Okay, so if we uh, instead wanted to have, uh, let's say, uh, say 10 hidden units and and let's use uh, exp index one this is going to create a slightly larger network you can see there's our 10 hidden units now uh, so the number of parameters has gone up and our exp string you can see exp one and number of hidden is right there so if we look at our results directory you can see that we now have a, uh, a second file. It's also 312 bytes, um, but it has that same exp string uh, there. So when in, so in naming things in this way, it makes it a lot easier to, to be able to go back in and pull out the files that we need in order to do later analysis. And, and we'll, over the course of, of a whole variety of examples, we'll actually expand this out pretty dramatically such that these File names, they get pretty long, but it makes it really easy to do stuff later. Okay, so that's uh, a, a quick introduction to executing things on the login node. Again, make sure that you are only executing very short uh, uh, experiments here. And the intent here is to do debugging. Uh, had we made a syntax error within our Python file, and some of you probably have, uh, then you will receive a, a variety of errors during this execution process. And this gives you an opportunity to resolve those before actually pushing things out uh, to the compute nodes. So next up, we'll start to get ourselves set up for doing those experiments on the compute nodes themselves.